Greetings, this is Jazz for Jazz Reviews. Is it E3 time already? Alright. Well, after trawling through every piece of gameplay shown this year at the convention, I think it's safe to say we're in for one hell of a ride this year and the next. It's time to showcase my top 5 upcoming games that caught my attention and will definitely catch yours. At number 5, we got us some Dead Space 3. The first thing to hit me about this game is the big print co-op campaign. As a horror game, Dead Space 2 would have been all the more enjoyable with a second player that just would have added to the fun. At other times, perhaps it's fine just to creep down those corridors at 4 o'clock in the morning all by yourself. But whatever the case, judging by the footage shown this year, Dead Space 3 seems to be focusing more on an action type survival this time around. To back that up, we can see conflicts with other fellow human beings and not just the necromorphs. But don't look too far into that. All we've really got at the moment is some dramatic, shaky footage that may not be fully representative of the game. Remember it's a presentation looking to strike excitement or hype for the game. And there's been a lot of controversy in comparison with Resident Evil in how we may have lost that critical sense of isolation or helplessness. That's what made Dead Space. But the co-op mode is optional guys. Don't worry there'll be no AI partner for the single player. But what we have got ourselves is a new narrative in finding the source of the Necromorph outbreak. And with it I think this game will hit some pretty decent review scores as the gameplay doesn't seem to have changed that much. Which is a good thing. At number 4! Well well, LucasArts, Star Wars, just refreshes the memory, doesn't it? Star Wars 1313. There's been a lot of talk about this one, but the fact is, it's just talk. I know we've all been hoping for that Battlefront 3 edition, but from interviews conducted at E3, Developers emphasize the amount of maturity to this one. We don't need lightsabers, we do not need Jedi powers. And I'm not knocking that, it's just, perhaps it's time for another bounty hunter to take the stage in replacing the same kind of button matching Jedi we've seen for years. The graphics look phenomenal, there is absolutely no information of its release, but man does this remind me of the Uncharted experience. The environmental effects from just a few minutes of footage have been confirmed constant throughout the game. So we can assume 1313 will be a linear style Star Wars game and I'm hoping will involve some kind of RPG element, along with the guns and the gadgets promised. Coruscant's a big city, opportunities are endless. The Star Wars universe is colossal with its license capitalized on for hundreds of Star Wars games. If LucasArts does wrong on this one, then they'll still make loads of money, make 10 more Star Wars games and release the next 5 movies in 3D. There's no stopping it. But I just hope some kind of Uncharted and Star Wars can get married and make for some good gameplay for a change. At number 3, The Last of Us. PS3 exclusive this one. Naughty Dog paints a picture that is both post-apocalyptic and beautiful. Optimized for the PlayStation 3, could this be the best looking game on the consoles? I think so. You see, the production value is so impressive, you may have thought the whole E3 demo was scripted. It wasn't. Throw away the path A, path B. You decide how you want to play. This demo could have played completely different with a complete stealth approach in taking down each enemy one by one with different lines of dialogue each time. Now if you're not familiar with the story, you may automatically think the playable Joel is the father to the 14 year old girl called Ellie. In fact, this Joel was actually a black market dealer and the kid an orphan. So it'll be interesting to see how the characters ended up together and where the story takes them in a quarantined Pittsburgh and so on. He tells me how these streets were crowded with people just going about their lives. <laughs> Must have been nice. You see, the pandemic has also affected the civilians of the area, and it'll be your job to get you both through this mess. But, just to state, this is nowhere near a zombie game. 
You have to watch out for things such as factions called the Hunters, who, like any bandits, like killing tourists. Now, to my knowledge, Naughty Dog will be using the same in-house engine, aided with Havoc Physics. It is a survival game, and the interface reflects this with apparent medical tools, food, and batteries. And what I'd also like to put out there is a life slash health bar. What? Yes! Thank you, Naughty Dog. It's realistic. It's about humanity, this one. This is not just another Uncharted killing hundreds of enemies with nothing behind it. I'm looking at another 10 out of 10 for Naughty Dog. I know it's easy to speculate, but I got a feeling. At number 2, developed by Ubisoft, Watch Dogs. Now I don't know if you've already seen what's what, but from where I'm standing, yes, the graphics look phenomenal. Comments came spiraling in, rumours that the footage is in fact next-gen console material. But it was shown on PC, it is primarily a PC game, that's what you get. So ask yourself, what if all the electronics in the world could be controlled, linked to a national grid, and someone? The main character, Aiden Pierce, was just able to hack it all. I'm talking mobile phones, cars, lights, helicopters. We can't be entirely sure what the plot will involve, but you could imagine how government likes to control its people and computers, right? Yeah, we know. So here we can see the main character jamming everyone's phones along with this guy's earpiece. It's scenarios like these where the player will be expected to think, to get past obstacles with intelligence or flat out action. Whatever the case, it does look smooth, real smooth. The rain, lighting effects, especially during this fight scene are breathtaking. But what I noticed is a convincing amount of pedestrians and traffic in this sandbox world. Then the endless possibilities come to mind when a guy here decides to meddle with a traffic light. But it's not only devices you'll be able to control. To some extent, it's the people themselves, whose entire information you can access with just a touch of a button. Passing pedestrians in the street will never be the same again. I will become the Terminator. Judgment Day is upon us. HIV will be eliminated. But what it also tells you is the violence probabilities and maybe more important things like that. The point is, we can expect a number of ways of handling the situation with various resources that the player can utilize. I can't imagine the prospect of climbing skyscrapers, but we did see some pretty nice driving skills from our man here. I don't want to comment on the driving mechanics just yet, as we only saw 16 seconds of footage, but it's the little things I appreciate, such as the ability to catch a train, that would really make a game feel realistic. People are going to compare this one to Grand Theft Auto, and the fact is, perhaps GTA 5 does have some competition. But it's early days yet, with a little more footage Watch Dogs could be number one on this list. But I'm gonna need more Ubisoft. But it's definitely one to look out for people, the overall presentation and animation simply look outstanding. The future's coming together nicely, or at least my reveal list is, right? And finally at number one. Yep, you guessed it. Assassin's Creed 3. For those wondering about the other games at the convention, you may find I'll give the mention at the end of the video, but I don't think people recognize the significance of this title. When Assassin's Creed 2 hit, it was groundbreaking. It completely changed the genre, invented its own. It was simply brilliant. When Brotherhood came around the corner in Revelations just a year later, we began to see a pattern which was repetitive. But Ubisoft liked money and people were happy to pay. But now it's time for true innovation. I'm not talking about the implementation of a few gadgets or gimmicks. Assassin's Creed 3 has received the complete overhaul it needed for these last few years. Thank you. Please accept this as a token of my gratitude. Italy's been great, but it's stale, people. Ezio's ran out of steam. Character development's gone out the window. Let the Patriots fight their own battles. 
I'm here for the Templar. We follow the story of one Connor Kenway, half Mohawk, half British. Desmond will return, of course, because it's so fun to control his character. It's interesting to see that historical figures such as George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, and King George III will actually all take screen in this one. So set during the years of the American Revolution, it will be Connor's mission and struggle with the Templars that will truly define him. But the concern does not lie with the result of the American Revolution. We all know how that went. So perhaps Ubisoft will place a larger focus on true assassinations, minus the Italian Batman crap where stealth or caution are non-existent. You see, I did not feel like an assassin in Assassin's Creed. What we needed are stealth mechanics such as these to make things seem all that more realistic. Let's not forget the fact that the Colonials have guns, so please don't make it too easy, Ubisoft. The countering system does seem to have improved, the AI seem a lot more fluid. The new bow and arrow can be used to hunt down animals such as deers or wolves. And here we go, dynamic weather effects, changing seasons, no snow. And what we've also been promised is full exploration of the entire eastern seaboard, with full control of your own vessel. So what we can imagine and confirm actually are the various side missions and events that will not just take place on land. So along with the frontier, we actually get the entire ocean this time. And it does look great, doesn't it? I don't know what to say. I've never seen anything like it. Now, one of the main concerns I had lay with the free running this time around. I feared that Ubisoft wouldn't be able to adapt from square block buildings to dynamic objects such as trees with intricate details that may screw up the animations and the free running itself. I thought it could be very linear, but the footage shows otherwise. It does appear as one hell of an intelligently designed game. So let's wrap things up in saying that if I had to speculate on a game of the year, it would most likely be Assassin's Creed 3, or at least for 2012. Take note, with the exception of Creed, all of the games shown in this list released in 2013. I'll tell you what though, Tomb Raider did come to mind. Definitely one to look out for, maybe I made a mistake not placing this at number 5. But there's so many games I like this year including Far Cry 3, Lisa, I can see the door. and Metal Gear Rising. No one's a bigger Metal Gear fan than me, but I definitely need to see more of this one before passing any kind of judgement. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and the footage shown this year. This has been Jazz for Jazz Reviews. Please leave us a thumbs up and a subscription if you can be asked. But I'll definitely be covering all the biggest titles this year and the next. Any thoughts, questions, go ahead and leave in the comment section below. I'll try my best to answer each and every one of them. But until next time guys, thanks for watching, I'll see you around. But here will be the top 5 best and greatest movie-based games of all time.